Hello and welcome everybody. I hope you're enjoying your day at Planet IMEX so far. My name is Richard Allchild. I'm the Senior Sales Manager at IMEX and I'll be your moderator, moderator today for this session on networking. Uh, a networking event at a rooftop bar in Vegas, it sounds perfect, doesn't it? But for some, networking can be extremely stressful and their worst nightmare. Today, you're going to learn from one of the best on how to develop a networking strategy, both in person and in our new virtual world. Just some housekeeping for you. Um, please do use the chat as much as you like, uh, but I do ask that if you have any questions, please use the Slido feature. You'll see that in blue next to this video window. Uh, we will have a 15-minute session uh, for you today with a, with a five-minute Q&A at the end. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to our speaker today. Uh, Michael Dominguez serves as the president and CEO for Associated Luxury Hotels International. Prior to joining Alhai, Michael served in executive leadership roles with MGM Resorts, Lowe's Hotels, Hyatt Hotels, Starwood Hotels, and many more. Michael is also actively involved in leadership roles in the meetings and events industry, where he currently serves as the past chairman of the International Board of MPI. I'd now like to welcome Mike Dominguez. Richard, thank you, and um, thanks for inviting me for uh, this type of session. You know, it's it's interesting because it's a question we get often about networking, and as you just said, for some people it is uh, terrifying, and for others it um, I, I don't want to say it comes easy, uh, but it comes with experience. And you know, what, one of the things I, I tried to outline here for everybody was to really take a look at this and. You know, I, I was careful in making sure um, when we talked about how do we name this, you, you know, networking, it's, 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 uh, it's a journey, not a destination. We tend to think about, I'm going to an event, and if I'm going to this event, I have this networking opportunity. Um, no, you, you have a place to be that's going to help in your networking journey, but understand the journey never stops. It, it, there are different pieces that are going to be introduced to it, and, and it's one of the reasons, it's the way I look at networking. It, it's, and the funny thing is you can look at networking the way you would take a look at uh, other aspects of our lives. If you were writing a paper, if you were working on a speech, um, you've always heard a few a few key assets in each one of those uh, exercises. If you're writing a paper, you know, we have an intro, we have a body and we have a conclusion. If if you're um, doing a speech, you always hear, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell, uh, then tell them and then tell them what you told them. It, it's the same thought process when you think about networking as a journey. Uh, when you start to think about that is what are you doing in, in everyday life and pre-event? if the event is going to be an aspect of it. What are you doing in the event and then what are you doing afterwards? And there is a beginning and a middle and an end. And, and the only thing I would correct here, I'm not sure there's ever an end. Uh, there's an end to your event and that's what I wanted to focus on. And let's focus on that aspect first. Um, you know, IMEX, when we get together at IMEX or IMEX America, it is an opportunity to network with a great deal uh, of our friends and our family uh, within this wonderful industry. But, but how do you target that and what does it look like? Because it's, um, it's a lot of people and, and it can sometimes be uh, comprehensive. But, you know, one of the things uh, I look at and I love this quote, you know, and it applies to all things in life. It's, it's not the will to win that matters. Everyone has that. It's the will to prepare to win that matters. And what is your preparation for an event? Um, I know too many people that show up to an event. Have they looked at who's going? Have they looked at what the attendee list looks like? You don't have access to the attendee list. Have you looked at social media to find out people that are posting to those hashtags, knowing that they're posting because they're excited about going there? That preparation is probably first and foremost. And, and knowing when we go to these type of events that the, the list is going to be large, the audience is going to be large. One of the things that I've always shared with people is, you know, it's important to make sure you've identified the, the 10 people, and it doesn't have to be 10, it can be more than that, but focus on a number that's manageable. Who are the 10 people that you absolutely have to meet while you're there? And once you've done that, your preparation should be around those 10 people. Your preparation should literally uh, start to look at their social media feeds. Have you Googled them? Have you looked at what it, what they are doing uh, in everyday life? And you know, it's, it's that saying that it's all connected today. Um, you can't separate uh, what somebody is going to do or say at an event versus what they do in everyday life. And the resources are so available to us like they never were before. 
Um, candidly, I've been in this long enough that networking in the you know early 1990s isn't quite as easy as it is today. Today, it is too easy for me to understand people's lives, to be able to find out what their interests are. Even looking at social media, if you're not connected with them, you will find out where their interests lie. Um, have you utilized LinkedIn to really find out what are their likes and dislikes? If you can get, and, and their social media free feed is public, have you looked at what they like to read, what they like to view, what are their favorite shows? Uh, they maybe have listed their favorite music. You'll see pictures of animals in their in their um, in their actual tra uh, profile. And if you're looking at that, it, it could be kids, it could be um, animals, it could be dogs, it could be cats. You'll start to find out what the interest is. And the reason that's so important, it helps you with connecting. I, I think the thing that people are very fearful of is how do you start a conversation? How do you keep a conversation without it feeling awkward? Well, it's really easy is make sure that you're talking to people about the things that they're interested in. Um, and, and that preparation goes well beyond just the event. It's what are you doing to build a network? What are you doing to make sure you keep an audience that's connected? And, and today that is understanding how are you gonna use your online presence uh, to keep an audience connected so that when you do meet in, in face to face, it seems like you've been having this conversation for a long period of time. There's been a connectivity. You've been top of mind with people. And I'm showing um, a post I posted just recently that was talking about my travels as I've been traveling quite a bit uh, during this time frame since June 8th uh, to understand the protocols at our hotels and to see what's going on. And just wanted to point out, I mean, this type of posting got a lot of traction as you can see with 31,000 views but I look at the interaction and these are people from our industry these are people that uh, many of them I know well some of them I know don't know as well but all of a sudden there's a connection and you should be going back and looking at these and reaching out and connecting and when you have comments are you commenting to the comments are you making sure you uh, send a message to those that have taken the time to comment it all is part of a networking journey um, and, and this is all of that connectivity that will lead to a better interaction when you get to a show or get to an event. And, you know, what I just showed you, for instance, I, I can look at the analytics and you can see there are a lot of people in the event community that have interacted with this post of mine. And I can find out where they are as far as what parts of the country, what parts of the world. Um, it, it's an interesting one because it helps me navigate and it helps me keep a community connected in between our ability to see see each other face to face we've we've tended to lock in networking with just the face to face opportunity and understanding your ability to build a network engage a network and stay connected happens well before the opportunity of us ever getting together face to face study i i, I you heard me say this before have you googled the people that you want to see have you actually researched their background, find out if recently they've been awarded something, they've been recognized in the industry. Again, anything that will give you that starting point and, and that, that studying and research go hand in hand. You, you've got to make sure you're going to understand the audience before you get there. Um, and then you get to the event. So now let's talk about the event. Okay, you've done your homework, you've done your research, you, you've prepared, you, you've done your studying, you know what you're doing. Now, now it comes to the event. Well, Networking is not uh, is not something that is accomplished by those that want to be shy or want to be timid. If you're going to accomplish what you need to, you need to be able to not be afraid. Uh, know that most networking events are the safest environment that have ever been created. Um, they're an environment where people know they are there to connect and they are there to engage. So they are welcoming the opportunity to meet with people. So you shouldn't be nervous about it. And, and one of the things I, I, I've talked about is, you know, how do you approach this? Um, I put an image here and, you know, when you look at this picture, you know who's carrying the conversation. You know who's talking. And I, I can assure you, you would walk into a networking event and you're gonna see a similar scene. If you look around the room and, and you need to take the opportunity to study the room, You'll look around the room, you're going to see somebody, as I like to say, that's holding court, where they're the storyteller or they're the ones engaged and the other people are engaged with them. These are some of the easiest opportunities. And, and all of this you have to approach with a great deal of confidence. You know, one of the things I've told people, when you see that type of interaction and you see somebody holding court, it is the easiest thing for you to walk up to 
and be a part of the storytelling, listening, just listening. And when they, they do engage with you, it is your opportunity to introduce yourself to the other people around them. But you can find when people are storytelling like that, more and more people start to gather. Uh, it's happened since the beginning of time. It's human nature. And it doesn't feel awkward, not like, well, why are they showing up? Um, candidly, anybody's kind of invited to the party in these type of events. So don't be shy. Uh, don't feel like you, you don't belong. And make sure that you actually, um, you actually introduce yourself, even when you're not sure if you should or shouldn't. Um, one of the other things I, I highly recommend it, and it's an important one, is you walk into a room, you should walk to the center of the room and walk to the center of the room with purpose, like you know exactly what you're doing and where you're going, because once you're in the middle, you are in the middle of it all. And you be your, beeline yourself to the middle of the room and find somebody that you want to meet and you just walk in. And my point is, identify somebody and you walk to that middle of the room and you introduce yourself. That's the start. It, it's breaking the ice uh, and there's two ways of breaking the ice you know anybody who's ever jumped into a cold pond of water or a cold lake in the middle of winter you can either tip your toe in it and little by little put your body in it which becomes very painful or you can just jump in and when you jump in it's over with very quickly and then the rest of it becomes uh, pretty normal at that point it's the same with networking walk to the middle of the room do it with confidence shoulders held high and, and again, with a point, of, with a purpose, walk with a sense of purpose, exactly knowing where, where you're going and what the target is. And then probably the most important thing out of all of this is what is your follow up? Uh, networking is important. Uh, meeting people is important. It, it's great to carry great conversations. Um, one thing I should have mentioned is, you know, if you're going to be a good conversationalist and you really want the networking to uh, be very fruitful, Make sure you're asking questions versus talking. Um, asking good questions are some of the best icebreakers and you need to ask questions that start to, uh, really start to learn about the people you're talking to. Not yes and no questions, questions that are a little bit deeper, uh, a little bit uh, further in thought, questions about their journey, questions about their experience, questions about what they like to do, what are their interests, that really is a driver then you have to follow up and that follow up is a big piece of it and if you've done it well your follow up will include some of the conversation or some of the learnings you had um, from that individual and you know when you look at that the that connecting you're, you're connecting all of these pieces you need to connect the conversation you need to connect their interests and one of the best things you can do and we still definitely believe this in the hospitality industry and specifically here in alhai is have you followed up with a handwritten note um, interesting thing is that we do know that so much is uh, done today in the world through technology uh, but a handwritten note goes such a long way and i i always remind people there is so little mail that comes through uh, today that isn't junk mail or promotional mail that when you see a handwritten note uh, and i can assure you this is my world as well when I get my mail and it's uh, put on my desk and I see a handwritten note, guess what I uh, open first is the handwritten note because not enough people do it. And, you know, I, I used to um, remind our salespeople often is, have you done your five handwritten notes today? That is part of the networking. It doesn't mean you just met people, but somebody you met 90 days ago, are you keeping in touch with them? Are you making sure you're thinking of them? Are you just sending them a note that's a touch point to say, wanted to remind you I was here and I really enjoyed our conversation? You know, those are those are some of the biggest keys in a, in a book that I would highly recommend uh, that really is about networking is a, a book called Never Eat Alone. And it was a book by Keith Ferrazzi, uh, but it was really talking about that opportunity to connect with people and then reconnect with people and stay in contact with people. Um, he talks about losing your ping. If you ever get to a point of saying, you know, remember that person and you can't remember the name, you've lost your ping and you've lost your connection. The follow up, I cannot stress enough, is so critical if you're going to do this and do it effectively and make the follow up personal and make it relate to the things that you actually talked about when you've met an individual. But now you understand why I mentioned or why I started this by saying it's a journey. Um, it is not uh, it, it is uh, not a destination uh, because there's a lot that goes into it. Um, I'm going to stop there uh, with the presentation and um, we can open it up uh, for questions at that point. I can go a lot deeper 
Uh, but I think uh, it's an important start starting point. And for a limited amount of time, I wanted to make sure I covered all the pertinent uh, points uh, that, that actually talk about the journey. No, thanks, Mike. Some great tips in there. Um, and yeah, we've got some questions coming through. Please do use the Slido uh, app if you have any more. Um, so the first one that we have is, um, obviously, you do your research on someone um, looking at social media. How do you sort of not look to come over creepy when you kind of know everything about them and ask them questions about like their dog or something like that? Well, the, the interesting part is to not be creepy. <laughs> so yeah. you're exactly right. Um, my point is, if I know somebody's a dog lover, it becomes an easy question to say, um, do you have any pets? Because then the conversation is, you know, they're a dog lover and most dog lovers would want to talk about their dogs. They might even show you a picture today. You know, they may pull out their phone and say, yeah, you know, look at my dog, this is what I have. And then you're able to say, well, what kind is it? You, you, you bring up a good point though. You don't want to know the information and share the information. The information is valuable for you to know where to take the conversation. People uh, will talk about what they're interested in and passionate about. And if you want to get people talking, talk about what they're passionate about. And if they're passionate about it, um, they're going to carry the conversation. That's that's what makes it easy. Perfect. I guess uh, with, with that, I know with me, if I'm passionate about someone and I find someone who's also say passionate about football, we could go talking all night. And I guess the key is, is to divide your time between people. So for someone like you who's been in the industry uh, for so long, how do you make sure you divide your time between sort of new contacts and those that you you've been friends with for years and you want want to speak when you had a short three-day event for example um you know i, I think it's a, that's a really great question one of the things that i mention to people often is um and, and this is where i'm a little bit different it it is okay if i take the time at an event like imax um, we will see our partners and we will see our friends and it's a great time to catch up. But if these are people I see often and many of them are, I don't spend a lot of time at the at an IMAX America, for instance, with those individuals. I spend that time getting to know people I don't know and that I don't get that opportunity with. So I, I think it is a an opportunity for us to have those conversations out front um, to tell our our uh, clients, our friends that, yeah, I'm going to be at IMAX, but you know, th this is really my focus and my objective while I'm there. Doesn't mean I wouldn't meet somebody for a drink, but if I'm going to spend a, you know, three hour dinner, for instance, with people, would you want to do that with people you don't know or the people that maybe you get to have an opportunity to go to dinner four or five times a year because you get to get into their market or you see them all the time. I would balance it. If they're good customers and good friends and you don't get to see them often, you should take that opportunity. Uh, but it is an opportunity for you to understand that you, you do need to balance it and you need to make sure that you've level set the expectations uh, with with any of your circle so nobody feels disappointed. Yeah, I guess that your your circle's there for the same reason. So they're doing the same thing as you. They they understand that business will always come first, and then in something like Amex America, the friendship will come later, and the friendship will will always be there. Um, so another question we have for, uh, from the group is: Do you have any tips on how to start and stop a conversation with someone at a networking event? Yeah, yeah, you know, starting a conversation is really easy. Again, first way, first thing is to go introduce yourself, and and when you introduce yourself. You know, most likely and the most logical is somebody's going to introduce themselves. And then it's like I said, it's really starting to ask a lot of questions. And if somebody just introduces themselves and they, for instance, if it's me and I say, yeah, hi, I'm Mike Dominguez. You know, your next logical question, if I didn't offer anything more is, um, you know, who are you here with or who do you work for? And you'll say Associated Luxury Hotels. And your next question should be, really, what is Associated Luxury Hotels? What, what do you guys do? And, and again, most people have a passion about what they're doing, specifically if you're at an event like a networking event. So those are the most logical pieces. And to stop a conversation, it's really easy that if you know it's going longer and you, and you may need to excuse yourself around the room and just say, excuse me, and, and move on. And especially if there's other people. If, if there's not other people and it's just you having a one-on-one -on -one uh, conversation, um, you, you just need to apologize. So the next question is regarding your, your handwritten notes. And I agree, um, it's great. And when I receive one, I'm exactly the same. It's the first one that I open. Um, but in this sort of GDPR world where you may not have their address or, or people aren't willing to give you their details, is there a way that you can do it in a virtual world? Um, what else do you, other ways do you give that personal touch? 
A absolutely. You can still do it in a personal world. Um, you know, what's, surpri what's surprising is in, in this type of world, asking. You, you just met somebody. Um, what's really great is we still exchange business cards uh, in today's world. If you can get a business card, it's easy uh, because you'll be able to send or, or have an address. And every now and then I do run into that where I don't have an address. And it's it's been interesting in my career that it's been as simple as me asking, um, can I get a mailing address because I have something I'd like to send you? Perfect. That's what I guess if someone asks for your manager, especially your work address, then you're you're willing to give give that to someone. Um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, is there a way that you suggest that you sort of practice networking, maybe in social life, so that you feel a little bit prepared when you you enter that you know large room large room at the events? Yeah, yeah. You know what I I always say: is all the social settings are important. Um, if you work in a large um, a large organization taking the opportunity to go meet people you've never met before and, and following the same, uh, the same guidelines, you know, uh, identify somebody you want to meet, um, do a little research on them and then go introduce yourself and you'll be able to at least start and have a healthy conversation. Uh, but any of our social life, if uh, it could be your church, it could be something you volunteer, you know, you volunteer with, you know, if you're at a volunteer event, you tend to show up for the volunteering, but you don't tend to show up to think about, I want to meet everybody else that's here or I want to at least practice meeting everybody that's here. Uh, it, it, you just said something, Richard, and I say it often, is that I don't care what you're doing. Uh, it could be speaking, it can be networking. Uh, everything comes down to practice. And the more you can practice, the better you'll get at it. And uh, I would I would make sure you put yourself in uncomfortable situations quite often. Yeah, no, I'd agree, I'd agree with that. When I first started going my net, my first networking events, you just have to throw yourself in. And then eventually you'll know someone, you'll start them first, then you, you keep going. Um, you mentioned volunteering there. And as we as I mentioned in your intro, you, you, you volunteer with, with MPI, as, as do I on the board of the UK. Um, how does a volunteer role help you with networking? I guess it gives you that extra connection. Do you find that it helps you with your volunteer role? With, without a doubt. And, you know, one of the keys when you don't know somebody is, know the people that know people and and what they tend to do is want to introduce you so you know where the networking has really helped uh, or where the uh, volunteering has helped is exactly that i've gotten to meet people that know people and they've continued to introduce me to people and if you want to build a network specifically in this industry i highly highly encourage that you volunteer it's one of the best ways to build a large network and a network that will actually be beneficial to all parties involved yeah, exactly. I can, I can yeah, say that uh, firsthand. I mean, the amount of people I've met through MPI and other uh, volunteer roles. Um, so my, unfortunately, we've uh, run out of time for the session today. We had loads more questions coming in. It's been a very popular session. So thank you so much for such a, an engaging uh, presentation. I know we can't wait until we're all face to face again and, and network uh, in person. Uh, and I know that everyone now has some excellent tools where they can uh, get the most out of their interactions. And one last reminder, don't forget to follow up with your personal handwritten notes. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'd just like to say to everyone, I hope you enjoy the rest of your, the program uh, on Planet IMX today uh, and for the rest of the week. And don't forget to explore our underwater reef here on, on Planet IMX and that all of the sessions are recorded so you can go back and watch anything on demand um, throughout the week. But for now, thank you um, again, Mike, and thank you for everyone. And it's goodbye from us. Thank you. Bye, everybody.